One thing that we would like to do would be able to predict when they're coming so we could be re better ready. And that is also partially because us human beings love to make patterns. You know, when we evolved into human beings, when we were being chased by um, bigger animals on the savanna, we used our brains to make ourselves safer. And that ability to theorize about risks based on other things we see, to recognize that a movement in the grass is a hidden predator, or perhaps to recognize the connection between your gastrointestinal distress and the mushrooms you just ate, those are things that gave us the ability to uh, uh, survive and go on. And uh, so we are evolved to create patterns, especially when faced with danger. The problem is, is we find patterns in a lot of places, even when they don't exist. You know, we create constellations and stars. And in fact, historically, we also then have ascribed uh, our the fail, the failures, the ways in which we get hurt to the stars themselves. Even the word disaster, if you look at how it, it's evolved, it means ill starred. And it was first used by Shakespeare to represent the idea that our fate is written in the stars and you just got hit by really bad luck. We try to find these patterns. Now we have tried to find them for earthquakes. We've tried to find the time. You know, when um, you heard in my introduction, when I went off to MIT, I thought I was gonna be learning how to predict earthquakes and save the world, or at least the part of it silly enough to live on the San Andreas Fault. What we found though, is there really isn't a pattern there. For one thing, you don't want me to predict every earthquake. We had 700,000 earthquakes in, in Cali such a Southern California in the time of my career. You wanted me to pick out the half dozen of these that were big enough to actually do some damage, which means we want to predict the magnitude of the earthquake. The problem with that is that the magnitude is not controlled in the beginning of the earthquake, it's controlled by the ending. Remember that picture we saw of the rupture moving up the fault? If it had stopped down by Palm Springs, we would have had a much smaller earthquake. If it had stopped after 100 yards, we would have had a magnitude two earthquake, one of these 700,000 that we see all the time. So when we're trying to predict the magnitude, we're trying to predict how it stops, not how it starts. And it does not appear that those are connected, that all of these 700,000 earthquakes all begin the same way and the differences in how they stop. 